Hey, what's up everyone? William here with AR15.com. So today we're gonna do a review video on the M&P 10 Sport. So this is kind of the big brother to the M&P 15 Sport, which a lot of people are familiar with. 308 pattern ARs are getting a little bit more common, especially with the uh, advent of new, uh, I don't wanna say new, but newer cartridges like 6.5 Creedmoor, 260 Remington, stuff like that. So um, these pattern guns are getting a little bit more popular with long range shooters because uh, like this example, you can get a really accurate gun for an affordable price and you know customize it just like an AR15 a little bit bigger, shoot a little bit further. Going over some of the features here of the MMP 10 Sport, it is optics ready, so no flip up irons and no fixed front post on the uh, gas block here. It's not exactly low profile because it does have the Picatinny rail on top, um, but it is it is not the fixed post. 16 inch barrel, which is a little less common for the um, 308 pattern ARs. Typically you see 18s and 20s, but this is a 16 inch uh, 4140 barrel, but it has 5R rifling. Um, that's kind of a topic for another video, but you should see very good accuracy from this barrel. We'll find out soon. Standard birdcage flash hider, uh, MMP10 Sport still has ambidextrous safety, ambidextrous bolt release, and ambidextrous magazine release. So it carried over a lot of the features from the regular MMP10 to the MMP10 Sport. Um, which, you know, on the MMP15, originally they were a little bit stripped down. The Sport 2s uh, are pretty much full featured with the, you know, forward assist and everything. So this does have the forward assist and the dust cover. So there's not really anything basic about it. I mean, the furniture is relatively basic. You know, it's got the regular A2 style uh, grip and the um, standard six position stock. But other than that, it's a really good starting platform if you want to customize an AR-10. Uh, the trigger feels pretty good as far as mil spec triggers go. Um, it's not really heavy. You know, it has a really clean break to it. Um, it's not uh, real light like an aftermarket trigger, uh, but it is actually pretty uh, pretty clean as far as like I said, a factory mil spec trigger goes. 16 inches is a little short for the barrel for an AR-10 platform gun. You know, you typically see 18s and 20s even in a 308, um, but it is 4140 and it is 5R rifling, so you should be able to shoot some pretty good groups with it, you know, regardless of the ammo type. Speaking of the ammo types, uh, we have three different kinds of federal premium ammunition that we're gonna shoot. We have 185 grain uh, juggernauts. We have the 175 grain edge TLR. These are actually pretty neat looking too. They're all sort of blacked out with that uh, blue tip. And then we got some 150 grain solid copper. These are power shocks like a hunting round. 150 is a little bit more common for uh, full metal jacket surplus type ammo. You know, M80 type ammunition is usually 147, 149 grain, right in that range. So this will kind of mimic that weight of a bullet. And then we've got a couple of heavier ones too, just to kind of check the functionality of the gun. You guys might be wondering about the scope and mount that we have on top of it. This is a Trigicon AccuPoint, two and a half to 10 by 56. Absolutely excellent scope. Um, one of those things like once you see glass like this, it's really hard to go backwards. Take the caps off here so you guys can see the adjustments. Uh, being an AccuPoint, it doesn't have any of the um, graduations on the reticle. You know, it's just uh, the point there in the middle. So you're really just dialing to get back to zero if your, you know, your range changes. Um, these uh, dials, you can actually pull up on them and they'll spin free, or you can click them down and they will have the little detent, a little click for each, you know, quarter inch uh, adjustment. Each click is one quarter MOA. Very nice adjustment knob for the zoom. Uh, you know, sometimes companies get this wrong where it's super stiff and hard to move or it flops around and it's all loose. This one is a little bit of a rubbery feel feel to it and it has nice notches that you can grip. It has a little bit of a raised bump here, almost like those levers that you can clamp onto some of them. This one's built in. It's just tall enough to be useful, but not so tall that it gets in the way. Nice little triangle here on the uh, uh, zoom also, so you could just point that triangle right at the magnification that you want. Got a little quick focus ring there on the front. And like I said, the glass is absolutely impeccable. It's just amazingly clear. So we'll go ahead and just make sure that the AccuPoint is at least on paper. Uh, just set up a couple of targets and just make sure that we're in the ballpark. That way we can back up to uh, 50, check it again, and then we'll go back to 100 and uh, ring some steel. All right, I just put a few of the 150 grain power shocks in it just to kind of get an idea for you know how it's, uh, how it's sighted in here, if it's even close. I'm a little curious about the recoil characteristics too. Actually, it's super close. Um, windage is actually pretty good. It's a little low, but as close as I am with the sight offset, I might just leave it alone and just back up a little bit. That's uh, that's pretty cool just to mount, you know, throw the mount on there and that it's that close, but um, it's got a little bit of recoil to it. And like I said, it's a relatively light gun as far as 308s go. And just with a birdcage on there, it does have a little bit of recoil, which I sort of expected, um, but uh, muzzle brakes can always fix that. 
All right, so we're back here about 50 yards. Take another shot and see if we are <clears throat> still on paper. And we are. Still looks pretty good. It's actually amazing how close that scope is for me just setting it on there. All right, so we're back here at 100 yards now, and I'm just going to take one more shot and see if we are still right in the realm there uh, from what we originally sighted it in. Shooting straight into the sun. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Late, no problem. So we're still we're still sighted in pretty well, which is amazing since I didn't adjust anything. All right, 185 grain juggernauts. We'll try a few of these. Imagine the point of impact is going to be close enough so that uh, uh, we don't really have to worry about any type of adjustment. Not that we've made any so far, but it's like a 12 inch steel plate. So I'm confident that we'll be right there in the ballpark. Maybe not. Maybe I pulled it. Well, uh, it's actually a little difficult because I have to get my hat up on top of the scope because the scope hits my <laughs> hits my hat. Yeah, interesting. I don't know where these are going. Well, that one was into the steel. Maybe a little low. Uh, point of impact is a little bit different, but good news is cycled all of those just fine. Pretty small sample size for cycling here, but and the ammo is a little bit expensive. So 175 grain edge TLR. If you guys have ever seen these, they're all black. Case is all black. The uh, bullet and everything. Yeah, maybe we'll try five of these. Try some of these guys out. Yeah, that's the ticket right there. Sure hope that steel clang is coming through. <laughs> on the uh, camera, or on the microphone, I should say. Ah, so we didn't lock back. I thought I had five. So we didn't lock back on that one, but did cycle them all. And uh, boy, it's a shooter. All right, guys. Well, Smith & Wesson definitely has another winner. I mean, the price range that this gun falls in for what you get is absolutely fantastic. The ambidextrous features, you know, you get the Smith & Wesson quality and warranty, good barrel with good rifling, and, you know, an affordable price. So I think it's really good. I say the same thing about the MP15 Sport 2 as well. Um, they're just really uh, quality guns and, uh, you know, with just the right features for a really good price. So um, nothing really to complain about. Yeah, maybe I'd like better furniture, fancy trigger, stuff like that. But it all just drives the price up. I, I think for what you get and how this gun works, it's just right. If you guys have any other questions about the MP10 Sport or the Trigicon AccuPoint 2.5 to 10 by 56 <laughs> or the Midwest Mount, uh, just go ahead and drop a comment. I'll try and answer all the comments. If you guys like this kind of content and you appreciate these kinds of videos, you find them informative, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for joining us here on AR15.com.